Hello and welcome to Multiplying Freedom Ministries, Spiritual Warfare, Healing and Deliverance classes. I'm Bruce Gordon. Today we are going to be taking the spirit of stagnation. Not a word you hear very often, but the basic idea is uh, what, I don't know if this uh, carries over into Europe, but uh, in the States we call it being stuck. Being someplace, you can't get out, you can't move, you can't try anything, you can't do anything, it's, you're stuck. Uh, that's stagnation. Stagnation is a tactic of the enemy, producing stagnation, that is, so that people will get discouraged, frustrated, uh, they, they get out of the spirit, into the flesh, they give up on God, they give up faith and hope, and it's a mess. When you know people who are stuck here, it's very frustrated. I have dealt with this spirit myself. I know how it feels to feel as though you are, what's the matter? I'm gifted, I'm called, I should be moving, I should be seeing God do stuff and instead stuck. Same place year after year. We're gonna address that <clears throat> today in the name of Jesus. Where does it come from? How do you get somebody unstuck or yourself? And we will pray. And then at quarter till the hour, we are going to go into live open Q&A prayer and whatever else uh, God or the people involved stir up. So we're going to get going. So stagnant water would be like a pond or a puddle. Uh, the water is not moving. It's not changing. The water is just sitting there. And after a while, water that has no flow through it, no movement, starts getting kind of yucky looking, dormant. Standing water, not what you want. And stagnancy in the spirit is definitely something that can very badly discourage and even stall somebody if you're fighting that. People who are seeing no progress, you see this. Churches are stagnant. Ministries are stagnant. Marriages. We're going to go into the various settings that stagnation can go. But basically, you've got a thing where people are stuck in the same place. They're not moving. They're not sensing any movement. They're not sensing hope. They're not sensing or feeling like what's going on. God is going to be doing something. And so what you've got is a situation where there's, an, there's no expectation that God is going to move. There's no expectation that God is going to be taking care of stuff, that God is going to be fulfilling his promises. These are all very, very hard, detrimental things to deal with. So... People, it's very, very nasty spirit. <clears throat> so what do you do? You have to figure out, in part, where it comes from. And then once you know the root of it, you can go after it from there. People experience stagnation in various ways. Some people, it's financial. They're working hard. They're making money. But it disappears just as fast as it comes. This can be working alongside the spirit of poverty, which we dealt with recently. People can have marital or relational stagnation, where the relationship that they're in, whether it's church, family, marriage, coworkers, or anything, there's no movement, there's no change, there's no development. You're just stuck, and you want stuff to move and change and develop, but it's not happening. So we're just saying, what's the matter here? Well, there's a biblical example of this in Numbers chapters 13 and 14. Uh, Joshua and Caleb and the other 10 of them had gone into the promised land. Check it out. See what's going on. Well-known story. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, come back and say, no problem. There's big guys in there, but the place is awesome. It's like it was set up just for us. We need to go in and take care of business. Ten others say, uh-uh. The enemy's too big, too strong. We're like grasshoppers trying to fight against big, strong men. I'm warning you guys, don't do it. And the crowd listened to the 10 instead of the two. God, in response, says, you're going to be stagnant. You're going to be walking around in circles for 40 years until all of you guys that advocated for not believing God are gone. I'll watch you die and drop one by one. Not fun. This is an example of a stagnation situation that comes because of sin, sin of unbelief, the sin of fear. Didn't know fear was a sin? Think again. Fear is the absence of faith. 
when somebody's walking and they're dealing with the spirit of fear, they don't have faith, they don't have trust, they're not depending on God, they're not honoring God, it's in a place of sin, a sin of unbelief, doubt, and fear. Many people, many churchgoers, ministry people, they're actually walking in fear. It's very, very serious business to be walking in fear. And I know people who have dealt with it. I've had to deal with it myself and recognize fear is real and Christians can be subject to it. Fear is real. And sometimes Christians are listening to the voices of doubt and unbelief. We got to be really careful who we're listening to. So if you are wondering whether this spirit of procrastinate, not spirit of, spirit of stagnation is really doing anything, look and see how people are living. If they're just kind of like wasting time, they're just kind of going around and saying, well, it doesn't make any difference whether I'm working for the Lord or whether I'm just watching TV. It doesn't matter whether I'm praying and reading the word and helping people or whether I'm just like playing solitaire on the computer. There's a lot of things that people do when they've kind of given up on God. People are get into procrastination because it doesn't seem to make any difference to them whether they are busy or not, whether they're praying and working for the Lord or not. It doesn't seem to matter because things are just the same. There's no change. This develops a very serious fatalistic spirit. It makes no difference. It's no use. Que sera, sera. You know, we just can't, you know, people give up. And you see this happen in churches, ministries, and even in workplaces, and yes, in families, marriages, and other relational situations. Sometimes people are just feeling like, I don't know what to do, but I'm really not seeing any difference. So I'm just going to cruise, put it on cruise control, just coast, not doing anything and feeling as though the things that you're doing make no difference. It's hard to keep going when the spirit of stagnation is attacking you. It's very, very tricky and troubling. So some of the demons that can be piling on to the spirit of stagnation, working alongside it or along with it, underneath it, Doubt and unbelief, Balaam and Belial, ignorance of the truth, laziness and procrastination, fear and worry, anxiety, trouble, prayerlessness, rebellion, and then witchcraft and curses, failure, poverty spirit, deaf and dumb spirit, infirmity and wasting, wasting spirit that just keeps attacking your time, attacking your energy. Nothing you're doing seems to work. This is very prevalent. You either have been here at one time or you know somebody who's here. It's very, very prevalent. So what about stagnation? How does it develop? Where does it come from? This is very puzzling, but we're going to deal with it right now. There's a number of places where stagnation comes. Now, some of it is when we start paying attention to the wrong thoughts and feelings. The enemy is always trying to wear us down, wear us out, get us in a place where we're not trusting the voice of the Lord, we're not obeying the voice of the Lord, and we are kind of believing our feelings instead of believing God, believing those thoughts that are racing in our mind instead of believing the Holy Spirit and believing the Bible. This is a very dangerous thing, and it's a slippery slope. Once you start down this, once you start depending more on feelings, and different thoughts that are coming in, knowing that they're not lining up with the scriptures, it's very, very dangerous to keep going there. Sometimes they're generational issues. Sometimes people, their ancestors have basically been working in this spirit for a long time. There are people who have worked hard, tried hard, and gotten nowhere. <clears throat> There's plenty of good people, good-hearted people who want to do well, they want to help others, but this spirit has just got a hold of them. And no matter what they do, no matter where they try, it's not working. Now, just like the spirit of poverty, there is a, a side to this that we need to mention. There's a good reason for people's 
efforts not amounting to anything. Quickly, the story, I believe it's in Habakkuk, the temple was in ruins, people were making money, and they were taking care of business, my business, taking care of me, my house, my family, everything else can wait. And God says, look, you're neglecting something that I'm speaking, that I'm doing, that I want to see taken care of. And if people are not going to take care of it, I'm going to make sure that they don't prosper, that perhaps they will get on board and realize, whoops, I haven't been giving. Now, giving to God can take many forms. Nancy and I give this to God. We're giving our time. We're not getting paid. We don't ask people for money. We give. We're givers. But there are people, they get out of the habit of giving of themselves, of what God has given them, and it can end up in a very stagnant spirit that's going nowhere. Witchcraft and the occult. There are plenty of people who know the Lord. They're in ministry. They're praying. They're trying to make disciples. They're trying to do the Lord's work. They're trying to extend the kingdom of God. But witches and other demonic practitioners are cursing them. This happens all the time. Nancy and I have been the target of this. So what we want to do is we want to say, if this is happening, take one of the uh, videos in our self-deliverance video series, um, Steps to Freedom. There's a section there on witchcraft, breaking curses from witchcraft. It's about 15, 20 minutes long. Very, very helpful. I recommend it. It's basically pray along with me on video and break off some of these curses and witchcraft uh, stuff. Now, on our website and in Facebook, we have a couple of documents uh, written by Gene Moody. One is uh, shorter prayers. There's one that's AM and PM, but there's another that's a one-page PDF. Strongly recommend it because it deals with curses and witchcraft and a lot of other things. Bitterness and unforgiveness. Sometimes people who have bitterness and unforgiveness, they are stuck because they are withholding from others what God has said to give them, which is grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Sometimes there are soul ties. We have been in some sort of relationship. It could be business, could be ministry. It could be a uh, relationship of the heart, a sexual relationship. And if the bad relationships are not, are not broken off, if the soul ties from relationships that are harmful in the spirit, if they are not broken off and dealt with, they can produce very strong stagnation, going nowhere because you're tied. Now, trauma, almost any demonic attack can come in via trauma. Trauma can take many forms. There's, there's stuff on our YouTube channel and our webpage on it. YouTube channel is Multiplying Freedom. Our webpage is multiplyingfreedom.com. And on Facebook, we're as Multiplying Freedom. There's plenty of stuff that we've got up there that deals with fear, worry, anxiety, deals with rejection, unforgiveness, bitterness, all of these things. We've got stuff up there and people are checking it out and they're getting helped. One thing that you see, stagnation, Freemasonry in the bloodline. Freemasonry is very, very serious business. Most people don't know anything about it, except that there's a Masonic hall, temple, or lodge in their city or nearby. That's about all people know. I was in that place not so long ago, but now we routinely see the effects of Freemasonry in the lives of people who have ancestors that were there. Break it off. There's a three video series on our YouTube channel just search for Freemasonry on our YouTube channel, Multiplying Freedom. Read along, get free, break off those curses, break off those oaths, break off all of that nasty stuff. I've experienced it. I don't know any ancestors that were part of the Masons, but I read through all three of these, uh, you know, these sessions. Very, it took, each of these is about 30 minutes one of the best 90 minutes I've ever spent because it broke off a lot of serious business. Sometimes, sometimes spirits cause things and sometimes things draw spirits. There's a saying in the States, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, we don't always know, but we know that there's a correlation. Many things correlate with developing a spirit of stagnation. 
people who live without a purpose, who never think about their purpose, their destiny, and their calling. And there are Christians who've never been taught that God has a destiny, a calling, a blessing for you to bring into the world they've never heard. And so they get stuck in a spirit of stagnation. People who don't make any efforts towards self-development, people who have a pessimistic, negative, fatalistic attitude about life, many people in church, you don't hear too much positive coming out of their mouth. It's negative, negative about themselves, negative about others. This is no way to get ahead. It's a good way to stay stuck. People who trust in the arm of the flesh, people who think they can do it on their own. Well, sometimes God will allow circumstances to produce stagnation, to produce lack of movement, lack of development, so that people will come to the conclusion, maybe I should pray. This includes Christians. You'd be surprised by the number of people who appear to be devout Christians who never really pray. They never get a hold of God to the point where they say, thank you, Lord, I know it's coming. If that's you, devote yourself to prayer. Devote. Devote yourself to the word. Be in the word. Be in prayer. Claim the promises. Let it be a living experience, and you will not often have stagnation to deal with. Sometimes people have negative attitudes, and they give up. They just can't do it. They don't want to keep going. And that can lead to an opening for the spirit of stagnation. Now, sometimes people just don't know what to do. All they know is they're stuck. They may not even know they're stuck. People who are stuck with a spirit of stagnation, they are not moving, they're not developing, they're not growing, their, their personality, their relationships are not developing, their ministry's not growing. They don't even know because they kind of accept this as the way it is. This is very common in marriages, sad to say, even Christian marriages or marriages where the people say that they're Christians. They don't know that there's lots more, but they're stuck with a spirit of stagnation. So what do you do if this is the case? What do you do if you feel like you're stuck? You look around and you see other people advancing, other people growing, other people developing. Their ministries are growing. Their marriage is obviously deepening. Their, their work is growing, and but yours isn't. If this is you or you know of someone you know, what do you do? Well, what we always say in Multiplying Freedom is we go back to the root causes. If, <clears throat> take a look and see, is there any place in your life where you are pretty sure God wants you to be changing? Starting something, stopping something, changing something. This may be related to why things are stuck. Oftentimes, if there is sin, and I define sin as any place in our life where we are resisting the Holy Spirit, this is straight out of Acts. Stephen said to the Pharisees, you guys always are resisting the Holy Spirit. Ooh, that made them mad. We're resisting the Holy Spirit, or we are doing things that we know the Lord is not pleased with, or we are failing to do things that the Lord has spoken to us or which we reasonably know he wants us to be doing. If that's the case, repent, change it, fix it. It's very important. It's not difficult. If you feel that your stagnation is due to curses from witchcraft or occult practitioners, go after it in the spirit. There's stuff on our website and our YouTube channel that will help you breaking witchcraft and occult curses. We deal with this in our Steps to Freedom videos. If there's something out there, bitterness and unforgiveness, deal with it. Forgive, release, and bless people. Make sure you hold nothing against them. If there's soul ties with people, if you know that there's some tie or some influence from a person that's not godly, it's not helping you, it's not contributing to you progressing, Break those soul ties, cut them off, and do whatever else the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You want to be very clear that things are really open, clean, pure, and holy. If there's unbelief, if you, if you feel like the problem is unbelief, faith comes by hearing. Get into the word and start looking for promises. 
and start praying them. There are plenty of places to find the promises of God, prayer promises. I should be doing some postings on these. Pray the promises of God. Hang on to them. Hold them up to the Lord and expect God to do something. And tell God you're expecting it. If you are dealing with some sort of relational stuff, if your relationships are not in good shape, do the work that you need to do in order to get your relationships into good, good shape. If, they're, if you're not giving, make sure that you're giving. Giving is a lifestyle. It involves how you spend your time, who you spend time with, whether you're helping people or just being self-centered. If you're giving or not giving. Giving a generous lifestyle of blessing others is what the kingdom of God is all about. That is one way to get out of being stuck, of being stagnant. It's the same thing. If you're hurting, if you're frustrated, look for ways to help and bless other people. It's a wonderful way to break out of whatever is going on in your life. If you feel like you are um, dealing with unbelief, with lack of faith, lack of trust, get prayer. These things are really serious and you wanna get prayer. Pray that people will help you and go and get prayer from a prayer minister who knows how to break things off, somebody who knows how to discern what's going on in the spirit and can do something. You want to be able to get a vision for what God wants you to do and if you don't have that vision, take some time and pray and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it? You have saved me. You've gifted me. You've anointed me. What am I supposed to be doing? If you know what you're supposed to be doing, start taking some first steps to get there. Pray in faith and expect God to do stuff. Take risks. It's really important to take risks. Without taking risks, you will never accomplish anything significant. I myself was not always comfortable taking risks. I preferred low risk, low reward. Well, in the kingdom of God, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught big risk, big reward. In the parable of the pearl of great price and the treasure hid in the field, the person involved who discovered this thing went and sold all he had and went back and made sure he got the pearl, the plot of land. This is what God calls us to. God calls us to step out of the boat, onto the water, walk with Jesus, and let him hold us up and let him open the doors out of being stuck and stagnant. We need a vision. And what I'm trying to do is say, Jesus's vision for you is to be in the spirit where God is blessing you, prospering you, and making you a blessing to other people. Your life should be a life where the gifts and talents and abilities that God has given you are being regularly exercised and applied in situations where they'll help people. It could be anything. God's destiny for you is not to be stuck, not to be stagnant, not to be poor, in the sense of not having necessities, but he wants your life to be a life of movement, a life of expansion. Read the book of Acts and see that the church expanded. Go and read the parables of Jesus, Matthew 13 and other places. Read the parables. God starts with a seed and the seed grows and the seed blossoms and flourishes. There's the mustard seed. I read the parable just the other day, tiny little seed, you put it in the ground and it grows and it becomes a very huge shrub and the birds of the air can come from all over and sit in the branches because it's big. It's fruitful. It's flourishing. This is what God wants for you. If it's not happening, look at the reasons why it might be happening. Look at your own situation. Take heart of your own heart, your attitudes, your thoughts, your words, your actions and say, is there anything in my life that seems to be inconsistent with moving ahead, with growing, flourishing, blossoming, changing, and helping others? Or is my life pretty much set up to provide what it's already getting? 
there's an old saying among business consultants, people, you know, people who walk around and look at your operation and tell you what you can change to do better. And one of the lines that business consultants use for many years is sometimes talking to churches as well as businesses, the way you do things is perfectly set up to produce the results that you're getting. The reason you're getting the results you're getting is that everything that you're doing is set up to produce those results, not anything else. So if you want different results, you're going to have to be start doing things differently. And this is a big challenge for some people. They don't want to change. They don't want to take risks. They don't want to walk in faith. They don't want to get out of the boat. It's very frustrating, but this is the way a lot of people operate. So what you've got, if you or someone you care about is stuck, they're not moving, not growing, not changing, not flowing in the spirit, look at sin, look at attitudes, look at words, look at the way the person lives, how their relationships are set up, and say, is there anything that they can change to make it more likely that they will, they will be ready for growth and development, change, and fruitfulness? If you don't see anything, go after the spirits. We're going to go after spirits. Go after the spirit of stagnation. Also look at spirits like doubt and unbelief, ignorance, laziness, procrastination, fear, worry, and anxiety, prayerlessness, rebellion, spirit of infirmity, deaf and dumb spirit. These are some of the spirits that are commonly involved with the spirit of stagnation. So there's things that we can do in the spirit and there's things we can do in the natural. Let's make sure that we're looking at both of them. The wild card here is the Holy Spirit. Don't forget to ask the Holy Spirit what's going on. He wants to be speaking. He wants to be involved in your ministry. Sometimes we're walking in our own understanding. We're not asking the Holy Spirit what's going on that we're not seeing. People, this should not be. We should be involved and in always listening to the Holy Spirit while we're ministering. So this is an overview of the spirit of stagnation. It's very stubborn. It's very subtle. You see people and they're kind of stuck. They're kind of stagnant. There, nothing's growing, nothing's changing year to year, not much is different. If that's happening, look for the causes and then start praying. You might be praying for a lot of things. We're going to pray in a minute or two, and we will get deep into this. So these are some of the factors. We've covered what tends to go with it, what correlates with the spirit of stagnation, how do you deal with it? And so we are going to get into prayer for this because this is what we do. We pray. And in this class, we have teaching around 30 minutes, and then we pray 10 to 15 minutes. So we're going to pray right now. Just relax in an attitude of prayer and receive. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Yes, I, I receive that. Yes, Bruce is praying. I want that. I want what Bruce is asking. I want it too. And get in on the prayer and you will watch things happen. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for all the ways you're blessing us. We thank you, Jesus. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit right now. And we say, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. We ask you, Lord, to send your angelic protection round about us. We ask you to come and visit with us today. And we ask you, Lord, Please come and set the captives free in the name of Jesus. We want to see freedom here. We want to see liberty. We want to see blessing. So in the name of Jesus, we are asking, Father, pour out your spirit and soak us in your Holy Spirit. Huh. Yes, as it is written, Lord, my cup overflows. Psalm 23, where it says, um, my cup overflows. Another translation of that would be, I'm saturated. I'm soaked. So soak us in blessing, enabling, healing. We ask you to heal every trauma, every infirmity, 
every wound, every hurt, every pain. We ask you, Lord, to watch over us and clean us out. Heal everything, all of the feelings, all of the thoughts, all of the places in our life where we hurt, where we've been troubled. Father, we ask you for healing, going right back to the time of our conception, back into the womb. Many of us have experienced troubles and trauma and fear, even while we are in utero. And so we ask you, Lord, for healing for all of that in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to fill us with your spirit in the name of Jesus. We want to be blessed. We want to be a blessing. So, Father, we ask you to help us to let go of any places in our lives where we are hanging out to fear, worry, and anxiety, or doubt and unbelief have any place in us. Father, we repent. We repent, Lord. Forgive us for fear, worry, and anxiety. Forgive us for doubt and unbelief, for envy and jealousy, for all of the other things that we are prone to. We ask you to forgive give us, help us to repent thoroughly. Father, we place our faith and trust in you. We ask you to call us to walk on the water with Jesus. Peter said, if it's you, ask me to come. And Jesus says, yeah, come on, come on, come on. And Peter walked. Help us to be like Peter that walked on the water. We, we clear out of the way in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father, to send your fire and your angelic warriors to come out and clear the way. Prepare the way for the way of the Lord. Every mountain and valley will be changed. The valleys will be filled in. The mountains will be leveled. The roads will be made straight. Make straight the way of the Lord so that we can get moving into our destiny, our calling, and the future, Lord, which you have planned out for us. We are going to trust you, Lord. We're going to believe in you. We're going to trust your promises. We ask you, Father, to set us into your word so that we are in the word. We are reading it. We are claiming it. We are believing it. We are speaking it from our mouth. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. I would encourage you to take a look, if you haven't already, on our webpage or on Facebook or on uh, YouTube. There's a document I wrote, One Page Scripture Confessions. It's called Who's in Charge? Who's in Charge? And it's very important. It's very helpful. And you can get it as a download. You can also listen to it on our YouTube channel. The page, it's one page called Who's in Charge? It's nothing but scripture strung together with a few connecting phrases. It's speaking the word out loud. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. I speak to the mountains and they move. God is the giver of all good gifts and he gives me what I need today. I speak to the things which are not as though they were because God is my father and I do the things my father does. Get on it. Get on it in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we thank you. We are praying in the name of Jesus. We say crooked things go straight in the name of Jesus. Hindrances out of the way in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, he will have what he says. So right now we speak to mountains of all kinds, mountains of infirmity and sickness, mountains of financial lack, mountains of demonic attack, mountains of relational trouble. We say to these mountains, be removed, get out of our way in the name of Jesus. We speak to those mountains. We pound those mountains into sand and dust and we blow them away in the name of Jesus. We say no more mountains to be in our way. Father, we repent for any time that we have doubted your word, doubted your Holy Spirit, doubted your will. We say in the name of Jesus, please pour out your fullness of your Holy Spirit, pour out the fullness of your spirit so that we have everything that we need and we break off every spirit in the name of Jesus. We break off spirits that work alongside stagnation. We speak to the spirit of stagnation. We bind you. We cancel all your works, orders, effects, and assignments. We cast you out in the name of Jesus. Spirits of doubt and unbelief, Balaam and Belial, ignorance, laziness, and procrastination. Spirit of Python, fear and worry. We bind you, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. Anxiety and stagnation, hindrance and trouble, prayerlessness, rebellion, curses and witchcraft, 
We bind you, we break your curses, we break your witchcraft, we break your works, we cancel your assignments and your orders, we cast you out in the name of Jesus. Spirits of failure, poverty, deaf and dumb spirit, infirmity, wasting spirit, we bind you, we cast you out, and all spirits working with you. Spirits of Egypt, Pharaoh, spirits of Edom and Midian, spirits of Balaam and Assyria and Philistia, all of you spirits, we bind you, we silence you, we evict you, we order you to leave us alone in the name of Jesus. And we say no more in the name of Jesus. Spirit of shame, spirit of fear, spirit of unbelief, go in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to release your Holy Spirit and fill us. Fill us with love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Fill us with the gifts of your Holy Spirit overflowing so that we are flowing in the life that God has called us to live. We say curses be broken, all curses spoken, danced out, incantations, rituals, candles, incense, anything, anything that has been said or done or prayed or spoken over us or with reference to us, to our detriment or our harm, we break them in the name of Jesus. We break them in the name of Jesus and we say no more in the name of Jesus. We say, no, you are forbidden to trouble us in the name of Jesus. We bring the blood of Jesus against you in the name of Jesus. We say no more curses, no more missed opportunities, no more poverty in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to remove all barriers in mindset. Thank you, Lord. We ask you to break all programming, all mind control, all sorts of troubling or interference with spirit, soul, and body, with our thoughts, with our memories, with our feelings and our emotions and our prayers. Anything that's been troubling or interfering with that, we break them in the name of Jesus. We send the fire of God against them in the name of Jesus. And we say no more in the name of Jesus. Stagnation be gone in the name of Jesus. We rip you up by the roots. We bind you, we curse you, we disable you, and we cast you out in the name of Jesus. We say to every work of darkness, be gone in the name of Jesus. We say no, 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 in the name of Jesus. And now I'm going to read uh, from the prophet Joel, chapter 2. Read this over us in the name of Jesus. Joel, chapter 2, verses 23 and following. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he will send the rain to refresh you, to water you, to water your land, to water your crops. The early rain, the latter rain, they are coming. The threshing floors, your storehouses will be piled high with grain. Your presses and your vats will overflow with new wine and oil. The Lord says, I am going to give you back what you lost. I'm going to restore to you what the locust has eaten, what the thief has stolen, and what the enemy has destroyed in the name of Jesus. Once again, you will eat and be full. Once again, my spirit will be moving. Once again, you will have what you need in the name of Jesus. Once again, I will pour out my spirit. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. I'll pour out my spirit, even on servants and working people, the lower class, everyone's going to get it. And I'll give wonders in the heavens and the earth, fire and blood and columns of smoke in the name of Jesus. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, delivered, healed, and blessed. So we release this word right now in the name of Jesus. It is the Holy Scriptures, it is the word of the Lord, and we speak it, we prophesy it over you in the name of Jesus. Well, this has been our treatment on the spirit of stagnation. It works very closely with the spirits of infirmity, poverty, doubt and unbelief, laziness, all these spirits that affect people. We have gone into what to do, how to pray, and you can take this video and 
put on the prayer section. Prayer section's about 10 minutes. And pray along with me. Let, let the Holy Spirit minister to you. This is going to conclude our recording part. We're moving on to live open Q&A and discussion and prayer. We are here on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, you can go to, which is Multiplying Freedom. Facebook, we are on at Multiplying Freedom. Our Facebook group is called Deliverance Help and Discussion. Check it out. All of this is free. All of our resources and media are free for you. Our website is multiplyingfreedom.com and our email for questions, comments, inquiries, and help, multiplyingfreedom at gmail.com. This is Bruce Gordon for Multiplying Freedom Ministries. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We hope that our ministry is helping you. If you've obtained some help and relief and freedom, please drop us a note. We'd love to hear from you. And until then, God bless you.